it's our absolute pleasure to have here uh, Alexander Talavera, who is a professor of financial economics at the Department of Economics, Birmingham Business School, University of Birmingham. He does a uh, uh, very interesting work on multimodal communication, and one of the few economists in the world who has embraced multimodal communication with application to a variety of economics and financial questions. And we're delighted to have you over, please. The floor is yours. All right. Uh, good afternoon. Thanks a lot for inviting my first time in Oxford. And uh, uh, well, I am quite excited to talk about uh, communicating with uh, emotions. And today it will be mostly uh, voice emotions that we are talk going to talk about. So yes, it's about emotions communicating. It is also quite a little bit about uh, some boring stuff, finance, you know, corporate earnings calls. Uh, stock market, but there are immediately you know, things that I would like to mention. I'm not gonna talk about any causality today. So like all economists, please <laughs> don't destroy me, you know? <laughs> and uh, uh, let's say, I, I'm still economist. And when it comes to specifics of acoustics, you know, like uh, I, I know certain terms, but I am not an expert, you know, 100%. So just, that's kind of disclaimer, you know, like to start with. Sasha, come on, you can't, you, can't, you can't display them on both sides. You can't say I'm not going to be an economist, nor the economist. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, let's say now, when we talk about communication, um, like to start with that thought, you know, I, I was always thinking about uh, what makes us kind of good lectures. You know, if you give the same topic to everybody to present it from, in front of classroom, you know, some guys will do better than others. And uh, so my, maybe there is something beyond, you know, boring text, right? So, and then we can start with uh, kind of Mithabian 1971, kind of rule of communication 751, 38. Uh, so words themselves, uh, you know, it's just only like 7% of message. Body language can see me moving quite a lot, you know, like that's supposed to have 55%. And tone, you know, that's uh, 38%. Well, um, uh, in, in, in terms of uh, uh, text analysis in economics finance, you know, <laughs> we have here some, we have here Michael, you know, like they know much more about text analysis. It's like uh, extracting some measures, LDA, <laughs> Michael is a big fan of LDA and so on. And uh, kind of narrative analysis of transcript, sentiment, uh, you can train, you can extract, you can get measures. Uh, there is new research in economics related to uh, visual analysis, but there are problems with visual analysis. First of all, most of available packages are out of shelf. So you have to have subscription to like kind of Microsoft, pay the money, and then they mostly focus on sort of face, you know, some parts are moving up, down, and they pick up, and uh, there is space reader pro product that so you can pay a lot of money to use them and submit images, get kind of emotions, uh, um, Microsoft AI. And this paper is not, it's a little bit of this text. It's not about uh, body or facial, but it's about tone, voice, voice emotions. So I, I've got- I, I, I know, I'm oh. very much an economist about this already, <laughs> but not, I'm not gonna talk about causality. I'm gonna just yeah. put in too early. Just, just the quote, the, the, seven, the 755 38. Mm -hmm. You have to be a little careful with that quote because his model was about how you communicate your attitude and your emotion. Mm -hmm. it, it, you have to think about what you're trying to communicate, right? So if I think about earnings calls, am I trying to communicate emotion or am I trying to communicate facts? And I'm not sure 755 38 is the rule for facts. So it, people throw this around a lot because I got very worried that something looks at words a lot. But <laughs> looking at the people I look at their words, they're not trying to communicate emotion. In fact, they're trying to do the opposite most of the time. But anyway, you can move on. I'm just putting a caveat, yeah. a star by it. Uh, let's say, uh, uh, Mark, I am sure you've seen this when they presented, uh, my cousin presented another paper and uh, 
uh, yes, you know, even about emotions, uh, uh, let's say, if we say emotions here in this, we are talking about sort of perceived emotions. Something, uh, I, I don't want uh, to, you know, like say something in an angry way, but I'm saying something and you see me as, uh, you know, being angry or emotional state like disgust or happy and so on. But uh, uh, let's say main message here, sometimes uh, our voice and visuals matter much more than uh, text itself. Okay, so I've got only one hour and I have kind of thousand slides with a lot of numbers. So well, what we do here? Uh, first of all, uh, like a few months ago, Rustam presented in this seminar paper about earning scores and he did text analysis. So we do, instead of downloading text file on its own, we download text file and audio file. Then we train machine learning algorithm, you know, using audio files and extract emotions from audio files. Uh, so we reconstruct our tone of voice communication measures. And uh, we explored here uh, how managers and analysts within this on its both communicate with each other. So far there is, uh, I, I have to disappoint, quite little economics in, in this. So that's just, you know, beginning of long journey and we still don't know where to turn left or right, you know, like this, that's, that's quite often happens. So my main results, obviously, that I would like to say that uh, uh, managers will the response affected whom and how the question is asked. So uh, in, in fact, uh, emotions matter. Also, we do observe a certain degree of reciprocity uh, in answering, uh, in other words, if you are aggressive in asking me, I am likely to be aggressive in replying to you. Also, quite interesting angle, uh, uh, let's say, who is asking, who is answering question, because, uh, uh, let's say, um, managers who deal with this positive emotive uh, analyst or female analyst exhibit a more positive response. So that can get to all uh, kind of literature on kind of gender diversity, females on board and what females are doing. Uh, investor analysts incorporate that information in trading and earnings forecast. So this is why do we care this? Do uh, kind of does finance work pay attention to emotions? Seems like yes. It's well. So in other words, that's paper one, paper two, paper three. But now we are talking about all, all of them to them together. A little bit, you know, nature of uh, 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 earnings calls. And this calls uh, consists of the representation from uh, CO uh, and, and then later following by questions answers from analysts. So uh, this work is only about question answers where we have this communication and uh, uh, let's say on this call, what's the purpose of them? Just generally uh, clarify views about current situation of the company like uh, uh, like some participants ask uh, uh, like Elon Musk, you know, please tell us about current state or what's happening with Twitter. And he says something related to Twitter. Sometimes, sometimes. Uh, Can I ask a question? Okay, yes. So it's, Fra it's Francesco, I think uh, we know each other. Oh, yeah. So I have a quick question. So how do you, the fundamental issue that I, I sometimes have with this approach is that how can you, um, uh, so if you look from the machine learning perspective, you see an emotion and then you translate it with some outcome. But how do you know that the um, the speaker uh, puts the emotions that he intends to put? I.e. that you may smile, but actually you are upset. So your technique say, oh, he's smiling, he's happy but the guy is not happy. So uh, do you assume that there is always a correspondence be be between how you feel and how you appear, or you have some strategy to control for it? How do you deal? Uh, Francesco, that's 
fantastic comment. And that's exactly at the very beginning, I said, we are talking about perceived emotions. That's kind of not, I want to be negative, but that's how uh, you sound in, in front of others. And uh, what machine learning algorithm does, uh, it's just trains for an average guy. So like, <laughs> how would he look like? Uh, there will be a, a little bit more details about how we train Francesco, and maybe then will be kind of more more clarifications. Okay. Oh, I I I assume yeah yes. So, but occasionally, occasionally, like in every conversation, we do have emotions. We do have emotions, and. Uh, Let's say yeah, I, I found another one, you know, like Elon Musk was at something and then Peter Stor and then Ellen laughs. You know, so something kind of uh, ha happening. And uh, well, we, now ourselves, we have certain emotions as well. You know, some of you look from this interest, somebody is hands, you know, here and there quite excited. Somebody is puzzled, you know, what is going on. And, and yeah. Uh, like, and uh, what we want, okay, uh, our data, um, questions and answers. So what is happening? Yeah, so I would say, uh, yeah, I Venezuela did contribute a little uh, bit yeah, uh, to the margin improvements. You know, we've done a really good job in terms of offsetting inflation with price improvements uh, exceeding inflation. So there's a, some contribution there. But we've been really pleased with the operating leverage in our core facilities here in the Americas, both on the uh, commercial and residential side. So okay, so this is kind of example of our job file that we worked with that we have to do something. Advantages of uh, question answers. Okay, we can say that some questions are expected. Right. But sometimes, you know, uh, there is high degree of unscripted nature of answers. Analysts also try to find out something deeper within, uh, let's say, answers. So what we did, our data collection exercise uh, was huge. Uh, so we downloaded exactly like Rustam did, you know, for his text files, but we managed to get 20 uh, and a half thousand conference calls. And we kept for this exercise only communication within questions answers. And in total, we got uh, 505,000 uh, question answer pairs. Involving almost 4,000 managers in almost 600 companies, I think 500 companies. Okay, there are a few, few kind of disclaimers, you know, how we form pairs. We don't know what the right thing to do when there is question and three answers. So that question, answer one, question, answer two, question, un, un, answer three. Well, you know, we can drop, we can play around. And uh, for, for each of these, we've got question, who asks question, text of question, voice of question, answer, uh, let's say who asks, um, kind of text of answer, voice of answer, okay? And now we want to convert, uh, let's say, audio. Is this part of, when you say who asks, is this like just categorical, like journalist or, you know, you know names? Yeah, yeah, but but it, so you think it's individual level, or are there characteristics that determine the reaction? Uh, journalists I, from right wing newspaper, journalists from right left wing newspaper. Uh, we don't go a deep there. You yeah. know, we know name, we know gender of person based on name, mm -hmm. and uh, we know order of question, and we know content. We don't know where the person was before, and so on. affiliations. We don't take into account. So we want to convert uh, uh, audio, audio files into emotions. And how do we do this? Well, generally, what approaches are on market right now? Uh, first approach, this papers uh, 2012, uh, Journal Finance, uh, you know, like uh, about using commercial software. So you put file in, you get number out, you use, and uh, that's it. Later papers uh, um, um, 
uh, you you sort of pitch you know that fundamental frequency f zero so that gives you kind of emotion spike to some extent f f zero uh, what is f zero uh, like uh, this measure is uh, can be easily extracted using like Pratt software or uh, Libroza. It's uh, a kind of one of characteristics of, uh, let's say, any audio. What is also possible, and that's what we do, we try to uh, convert our uh, files into discrete emotions. Let's say the difference between first, uh, second, and third. For pitch, you can only get emotional increase, decrease. You don't know anything about negative, positive. For us, what we managed to do, we have five emotions and we train our model so that it, it can be either positive, negative, and so on. Okay. So, uh, interpretation well, basic machine learning exercise. Uh, uh, we take uh, input our audio files and output we get emotions. What do we use for training? <laughs> like many other guys right now, uh, what we use is Ryzen audio visual data set of emotional speech and so on. So what is this data about? There are actors, yes, with North American accent. Uh, they say the same sentence in with, uh, let's say, eight different emotions. Calm, happy, sad, angry, fearful, surprised, disgust, neutral. So it's like, uh, like it is raining. It is raining, you know, like, well, I'm very bad actor. <laughs> Just, uh, but that, uh, uh, let's say, you can hire a professional to do this. You can talk about like monetary policy in different emotions, you know, like, but, uh, immediately disclaimer, and uh, if uh, Francesca there, you know, like these are all, you know, people who try to express emotions, uh, like in each of these eight categories. Actors, they're supposed to do, if they are, it cannot do, you know, like so. And uh, first thing, we don't know anything outside this set of emotions. If you tell me, do you know whether they lie or not? Lying is not here. You cannot train it. Okay? So far so good? Good. Uh, yeah, well, uh, there is another third emotional concept, but uh, Rappus is the main one. Uh, out of this eight, we focus on uh, uh, five emotions. Happy, pleasant, surprise, neutral, sad, and angry. Uh, why do we focus on this? There are some similarities like uh, neutral and uh, calm, almost indistinguishable for us. And it was more, more difficult uh, to pick up because our exercise at the end of the day is to classify our files. And uh, uh, our accuracy was much lower when we tried to split calm and, and uh, neutral. So at, at the end of the day, we need something positive, negative, and something neutral. I just one comment on that. I think neutral and calm seem very natural to put together, but pleasant and surprised, much less so. And uh, I can be surprised in both directions. Uh, look, no, no, so surprise was already kind of pleasant. That's kept, uh, I think uh, we didn't pick up uh, disgust, you know, like from emotion. Uh, calm was, uh, uh, let's say, dropped uh, and uh, something oh, so like that. I think they're just dropping, not merging. Uh, yeah, yeah, draw, draw, draw. And um, I'm curious, yeah, about fearful disgust. I mean, do you think those don't occur in earning calls, and therefore, you know, do these pods actually capture things, or are there, you know, essentially your your classifier is going to try to classify text into one of these emotions, and so the question is, how comprehensive are these pods? Otherwise, you might be sort of pushing, you know, if there is fearful. Uh, emotion being displayed is going to be sort of assigned one of these other ones that you're talking about. Uh, okay, uh, like in, in this exercise, uh, we have to balance between accuracy and uh, kind of aggregation and kind of selecting emotions. And we believe 
having five is a good compromise uh, between between these two. And uh, let's say we, we can go go towards all you know like we got data, but 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 then accuracy got gone down. We can make you know like kind of false positive or negative. So that, that's uh, okay. Can, can I, I, I don't know. Yeah. Can I can I ask a question? So here you look at, you classify the emotions of the speaker, but whether those will have an impact or to determine what impact they will have on the market, it depends also on the expectations that the receivers have. So if I expect the guy to be upset to give me a message and the guy is upset, then I'm not surprised. But if I see the opposite, so how the market would react depends on what the speaker says compared to what the receiver expects. Are you gonna control for the receivers or do you have anything to tell about this? Oh, for, for Francesco, uh, let's get to stock stock markets. I, I, I will get here, you know, like- uh, I see. Uh, let's because, say, you know, yeah, being calm, for being calm, it doesn't tell me much. I think it depends whether I expect you to be calm or not. Uh, there are, more things to control for that's text what you say that's also some kind of media coverage expectation and, and uh, a, a, a lot of other things that's why we are moving to question answer kind of interaction that's kind of communicated with emotions for the first part we have nothing to do with stock market it's like so, but the basic yeah. Basically, the first part you will tell me there is a systematic relationship between your emotions and what happens somewhere. Mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what you expect from, uh, from the speaker. If the speaker speaks in a certain way, it will have a certain impact. There will be a pattern. That's what you would do. Uh Okay, all our training, once again, that's based on average North American. Right. Mm -hmm. that, that's how, how we understand uh, our exercise. And uh, uh, we believe that our model picks up perceived emotions uh, from a particular person. Okay. Okay. So uh, like a, a, a little bit, uh, what do we extract from our voice files? Uh, uh, well, actually uh, uh, like Calibrosa Python library can give us a lot of the different attributes of any audio files, but uh, okay, we were learning quite a lot from different code files and the computer science, you know, like what, what they did. And the fact that they come to uh, kind of three measures, I think that they mentioned all together of three and 128, that's our first layer. Uh, let's say, well, what we have, we have chromogram. I don't know whether you are familiar with music. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right, something like kind of this. Uh, I'm very bad, you know, like. Uh, uh, I can't sing it, come on. Come on. Well, 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 I wanted to learn play guitar and my parents sent me to play flute, you know, because it was five times cheaper, you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, and I didn't <laughs> sing anything. Uh, all right, so that, that's it's kind of chromogram that's, uh, uh, let's say, also strands, uh, uh, spectrogram kind of strands, you know, like more powerful, less powerful. And one frequency coefficient, that's, I think, uh, a transformation for male scale spectrogram. That's kind of general knowledge of so one for strength of voice and uh, some derivatives of that, one for like tones, melody, right? So these are actually inputs for our model. And we translate this into uh, five emotions. And uh, here it's just the basic kind of training. Yes. Do you have speed of how quickly people speak? Uh, 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 well, uh, let's say, I think, uh, um, uh, how to say, if any of these kind of measures, may, maybe power to some extent, if it's slower, that's less powerful. So partially it should kind of capture. We, we can control theoretically by number of words within time interval, uh, that, that's possible, but uh, uh, well, I, I cannot say that we, we have one element that is within this setup. I cannot say right now. Uh, if I may, I, I, I will say that it's not necessarily speed that is the problem, isn't it? Not if somebody changes speed. You know, somebody can speed it really fast like this, and then if they suddenly go really slowly, then that might be more noticeable. 
well, uh, well, what shall I say? Yes, it, it's it's possible. It's possible just to add, you know, extra elements. The de facto, uh, let's say, we, we played with more of this kind of input. That's just another input for our training, and we were looking whether we can improve uh, performance accuracy of model or not. So, uh, like, uh, well, what is happening? So we have this kind of uh, machine learning exercise, uh, neural network, where we have layers, uh, and uh, we have like three fully connected <laughs> dense layers about architecture, like three of uh, these hidden layers in the middle, and, uh, you know, like RELU, so, uh, RELU uh, activation function of softmax, and uh, we achieve quite good, uh, and uh, say accuracy overall like 90 percent when you work with your data you don't use the kind of product that uh, you don't know anything about then you can to some extent uh, you know like achieve uh, let's say very good uh, accuracy and it's quite important that uh, uh, for each individual emotions uh, kind of the lower 71 was for pleasantly surprised yeah, and others are like all 90, well, almost 90 and above. So um, the, the model for how we train, we just experiment with different layers, size of layer, different activation function. And uh, finally, you achieve, uh, let's say, high accuracy. There is something that you might ask me. Look, uh, you pull all your data from these actors together. But uh, why don't you have, you know, number of some actors in your testing set and others in training, you know, like, but here's the problem that total number of actors here is quite small, 24. Uh, like, and then whoever you select to be in testing set, uh, there will be question, why do you select this? And this guy could be, uh, uh, let's say, either outlier or average. And, and this is a little bit problematic. So that's why we decided, you know, pull together, you know, all these questions, answers, and and cheat. Okay, uh, now now, uh, um, so each of our uh, questions, answers, each of your files, we can label into positive, neutral, and negative emotions, and. Um, uh, like positive, that's happy or pleasantly surprised. Negative, sad and angry. Our analysis is done here at most of our analysis at question answer level. And uh, also, uh, I, I am sure Francesco is looking for this, you know, like at when we link uh, financial markets. So that's at aggregated and at earnings calls. So, like earnings calls, you know, we, we observe certain managers to, to answer a number of questions, some of them positive, some of them negative, and we get negativity. And uh, just, yeah. just a quick question. So, these, we're claiming these are absolute emotions, but could it, how, how do I think about relative emotions if a particular speaker is speaks with the same uh, North American uh, accent, but of a different cultural background. So an Italian speaker could be, so could you, so in your emotion measure, could you control, could you construct a relative emotion or relative to the average degree of happiness that is based on the actors? Okay, uh, that's very good question. And people who use pitch measures out the emotions, so they normalize it person average. Mm -hmm. And, and they compare, you know, whether you are more emotional today they, or for this question, whether you. Here, exercise is slightly different, you know, like if you see crazy Ukrainian being extra emotion in classroom, you just take him as he is right now. Uh, more, well, most of you never seen me presented, only my place, you know, once or twice. So here he, uh, and uh, you don't uh, perceive my emotions based on previous one. You take me as of now, correct? So that, that, that's uh, that's our defense to this. So we are not talking you know, on on person average. Obviously, there is history of being involved. More experienced CEOs are known to be. Uh, let's say, like, like we know about Elon Musk, you know, like we, we can always infer. 
but uh, here uh, we can sort of control for individual sort of effect, you know, like manager's effect, you know, like uh, in our and specifications. But uh, uh, my main point here, you know, like we make implicit assumptions that uh, analysts and uh, managers meet in room. They kind of don't communicate that much. It's all about interaction by controlling for everything else. I uh, mean, you control for effect of CEOs, you control for effect for analysts. All matters is who asks questions, what they ask and how. That's kind of the only variation that they'll. But then, that based on the analyst's name, you can in infer where, which part of the world they're from. Uh, yes, theoretically, European, uh, so, but you could do a lot of things. It, it's it could it's be a also... long journey here. <laughs> the first ever presentation of uh, uh, this analysis, uh, and uh, we still don't know. I said, you know, on one slide I showed three papers. Hopefully, three papers. Okay, um, some, something kind of uh, uh, let to give you a little bit of examples. Uh, Right, uh, example one. Okay, does it look? Okay. You know, I am not sure, Gary, that I can, uh, that I have it in front of me to provide that, but I would uh, certainly say that June um, was uh, a bit disappointing for us versus May, for example. Okay. okay. Uh, so, you kind of will put it your uh, memory and then I know. Well, part of that, right, we're the largest MGA in the country, and so our underwriting operations are, are doing very, very well. But our open market broking folks are as well. So it's, uh, you're, we're soft on the property placements, and that's a big part of what they do. But we're doing a very good... So uh, let's say these examples, you know, I ask uh, uh, co-author to pick up one negative, one positive. Well, this is quite easy to say which was negative, which which for positive because you can even read text and that's an example and there was very good correlation. So immediately, uh, like that's our model labeled negative. Uh, there, there are kind of interruptions, not sure, you know, like similar what I was answering question about uh, speed, right? It's, it's kind of, you know, we should have control for this and, and somehow it was not in the ready to use set of my our features. You know, but yes, it's important as so. well. Okay. You know, I am not sure, Gary. Well, all right. Uh, a, 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 li a little bit uh, about tax sentiment, you know, like because uh, that, that's what <laughs> Michael now is happy about. We didn't do good job here. Uh, for tax sentiment, we just used uh, uh, off the shelf uh, FinBert uh, from Transformers. Uh, uh, it's very easy to implement this. Uh, it's been trained uh, using financial data. So, uh, like 10, 10 lines in Python, and uh, you can classify financial text into uh, positive, neutral, negative. Okay. Right. So, so uh, we don't claim any sort of innovation on, on this side. Actually, what's the point if somebody has already trained and po po posted and uh, we just honestly say, because I, I've seen some guys who use our shelf and sell them as a machine learning exercise. We don't. Just one thing. I think there are at least four thin wraps in existence. No, I know, but, but you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we know that that's... Uh, they uh, haven't talked to each other yet, but they've all come up with thin wraps. Yeah, that, that's, uh, that, that's absolutely true. And uh, I double, triple check whether we use that one. This, uh, the guy, I think, in Netherlands has uh, did... I think uh, an MSC dissertation, uh, like, based on thin wraps, uh, or training, and we have... Like, so, yeah. Uh, so the data source. So where do our audio text data come from? It's from uh, uh, Capital IQ. Uh, well, well, not many places have access to Capital IQ, but University of St. Andrews does. So we were quite happy. And then you pull different sources of data about managers uh, uh, that's coming from Wordex financial data, CompuStart, uh, Crisp, uh, analyst forecast, Capital IQ. 
And we've got uh, 505,000 question answers, you know, I've given you this information, but it took us more than a year to process, to down, download. And uh, the most uh, difficult part was to split audio files into questions answers. We still want to keep it, you know, as our no know how there are ways, but uh, uh, that was the most difficult. For instance, uh, uh, for another project, we wanted to hire uh, actors to say something, some sentiment in uh, different emotions. And company that could do this asked us if you want uh, to have it in a separate file, you have to pay like, uh, <laughs> like 20 or 30% more just because to, to kind of to split. And we are talking here about 20,000 files. So, okay. So uh, also there is uh, uh, because gender important part of our story. How do we get gender classifier that based on name? And uh, there is an answer API. We just, you know, get names from there and we label. Uh, whatever we cannot get, we just may manually search to based on voice. But uh, uh, for uh, these directors, mostly Western names, so it was quite easy to pick up. Okay, now we've got uh, 22 minutes and I haven't started talking about results. So what, uh, let's say, uh, our measure. Uh, we have a voice uh, answer was question that's uh, minus one zero one. So on average, you know, uh, we have more positive answers than uh, questions, which kind of makes sense. A negative that's uh, one negative zero kind of, uh, 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 let's say, non-negative. Uh, we have uh, text answers, uh, uh, so answers mostly positive, so like compared to question, questions are more neutral based on text. Uh, we have 7% uh, uh, of female managers, but 11% of female uh, analysts. Oops. Um, order, or, or order of questions, well, that's sort in the sense of log logarithmic forms. There are like on average, well, I, I don't remember like, 30, 40 questions, you know, like, and uh, the idea to, to find, find out whether the person becomes more aggressive or, or I do uh, average age, like 50 plus, uh, there are some new analysts, analysts that didn't uh, uh, participate in, in our database before. And uh, uh, just, yeah. Can I ask you something? So yeah, yeah you, you have uh, the transcript of these guys and they have their voice. If you look at, uh, you know, you do the classification on the voice and then you do the classification on the text. I assume that you, you know, the way you, you, you are talking, those they will give you different informations. I.e. that the, the, your results on the text, you are text, your uh, um, words used will be different from what the analysis on the voice will give you. And that's why this information will be re non-redundant. Is it, is it your underlying assumptions? Have you tested that? Okay, so that's Francesco. Look, here is my specification. Dependent variable, negative answer, okay? And if we check a set of uh, variables uh, that we can extract, uh, we can also extract, extract text of answer, meaning sentiment of answer, and text of question. So these are sort of yes. controlled variables. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so obviously, and, and uh, what, okay. what do you find on these controls? I, I'll show you in two slides. Okay, fine. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> it, it, like just, just to describe, uh, uh, like to find out, because all all the results will be slide show. You know, when when we understand what we have, so uh, kind of negativity of answer, and uh, so we check how question asks. So this whole correlation order of question first, second, third, and so on. Uh, female manager, female analyst, communication between different uh, genders and different sentiment of text. So it's not only how, but what is said. Um, uh, manager's age, uh, all the guys may be more relaxed, you know, maybe not. Uh, um, 
a CEO, CFO, was a manager kind of to kind of top position and was analyst is new or not new. Okay. Uh, also, also uh, typically uh, uh, we go for uh, let's say for a kind of uh, earnings call fixed effect, but sometimes they say, okay, you have to control for all set of firm fundamentals. So there will be two more columns with uh, uh, fundamentals, uh, you know, but this all is uh, firm quarter specific. If you put firm quarter, you kind of clean that stuff. Uh, but, you know, in front of finance and of audience, we try to do this. All right. Now, first set of results. What do we have? Uh, so negative uh, voice question, negative voice answer, uh, there is uh, like kind of 5% higher, you know, uh, more likely to be negative if you are asking negative way, you answer in negative way. So there is a certain degree of, well, let's say, reciprocity. So the, the directors, directors, uh, uh, let's say, uh, still react with certain emotions. So they, they don't absorb emotions, they don't kind of smile. So that's uh, first thing. Uh, other uh, like this, uh, uh, let's say, late in conversation, uh, I think uh, negative kind of become more emotional. Uh, so more neg negative emotions closer to the end of session. So getting tired, uh, let's say, maybe not getting tired, but kind of uh, uh, how to say, uh, if it's fourth, uh, fifth, uh, tenth question, more likely you were asked something negative before and you are likely to be negative, right? It's like typical N NSS uh, game of what people do. If you ask students to have a survey within the first week when nothing wrong happened, you know, they're happier compared to <laughs> that's out of record, you know. <laughs> okay, uh, uh, other things. Well, I, I don't know how to talk about this result <laughs> generally. Uh, so what we have uh, for female managers, there is higher uh, degree of negativity in answers. Well, that's correct correlation. That's kind of perceived emotions, okay? Uh, female analysts, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, let's say kind of low, low lower, uh, Probability. So, response to female analysts less likely to be negative, and response of a female manager more likely to be negative. Okay. Well, then immediately can be story related to again women on board and the role in to facilitating all this within board conflicts. Do you know whose voice is answering? So, do women also are more? Uh, we have tables for that. We have tables for that. Would be that. Fascinating. Right. Uh, CEO, it kind of it doesn't matter whether the person is CEO, CFO or not, new analyst. And then, uh, Francesco, especially for you, I knew that uh, you, you would like to see this. And so, text answer, uh, let's say there is correlation. Well, text answer that's kind of positive, negative. So if text is more negative, so more likely to have also voice negative. So there is a correlation between voice. It's not you know, perfect, it's quite in the floor. Other papers, uh, uh, let's say like uh, Crypto from Bank of Canada, they have three channels, uh, audio, video, and text and show kind of almost zero correlation between text and voice. Okay, and uh, let's say text of question has kind of no no effect of the way how to ask. So interesting thing, well, we can talk a lot about each particular element here, but, uh, uh, and we still don't know what to highlight. That's our problem because each time you pay attention to Gender aspect, that's a story. Uh, let's say text and, and voice, that's another story. Uh, but uh, there is persistence, there is persistence. You know, how you ask me, I answer to you in the same way. And there is heterogeneity who ask, you know, questions. Okay, now, uh, this persistence, uh, how to say, yeah, kind of uh, reciprocity kind of effect. So 
we started whether uh, there is high effect in persistence for female versus male. You know, who is likely to be more negative in response to negative questions, male or female? And it seems like uh, the kind of results are driven to, by female managers. So, like, we've got negative results here, but, you know, interaction prompts is kind of even stronger. Uh, other things are just, you know, like, for persistence, we, we don't get that much anything. Uh, uh, let's say in group out of group so may maybe it's uh, not female manager but maybe it's kind of mixture you know males respond to uh, other males females respond to females is different compared to males female you know like parts no it's not not the case it, it, it's not the case you know we didn't find a, 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 any sort of uh, result there then uh, our setup is quite unique because it allows for sort of dynamics of conversation. If, for instance, uh, you ask me something, uh, you know, very aggressive at the very beginning, whether it keeps accumulating me in all three uh, consequent answers. And uh, the answer is yes, it does. So we have negative, you know, results at reciprocity before, and we have Cumulative negative voice questions that's cumulative measure. I think it's like kind of percentage of negative. And the factor cumulative is much higher in, in magnitude compared to current one. Okay. And that's in, interesting again about female managers, this accumulation is also accumulates, you know, with uh, let's say uh, much more compared to. Let's say my Sasha, just a quick question. Taking together these results, these uh, controls, do they explain a lot of the variation? Are the R square large or small? Do, do you have a sense? I mean, probably there is an R square somewhere, but just, just to, because it is difficult. I think that the beauty is that the, some things are significant and they flip sign. So it, it seems that they, they, they voice has some no, non redundant information, but. <coughs> Are those controls good? Like, do, what is the R square here? Is it di are they explaining the old stories or they are marginal? I guess. Sorry, Francesco. I, I just uh, let's say I, I don't have R square, but they are in the table. And I, I think they are reasonably high, given that we have sample of uh, half a million observations. Because that, that is could be could help you to make the point. I think no. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, well. Uh, uh, let's say to what extent they are explanatory. You know, like so that's perfect. I, I, I don't remember R square immediately, but uh, I, I think these models uh, have, have kind of re reasonable power. Especially, a lot of things are controlled for. Let's say also a set of fixed effects. You know, like uh, we, we have time fixed effects. I think director can fixed effect there. So we did our best on that side. But can, can I interpret all? Because here, what I find it slippery is that there is no unifying stories. Possibly a unifying story is uh, whether this voice adds some redundant information. Is that evidence of it? Or you inter how do you interpret all these different results? OK, but that's exactly what I mentioned at the very beginning. This is kind Which of I missed. I missed the first six minutes. I shall, shall, shall. So, 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 uh, let, let's say, uh, Francesco, uh, this paper, this kind of first set of results, and we're still thinking about the way how to push it further. And okay. uh, it's possible that we are going to have a, a kind of gender aspect and boards. It's possible that we can go towards uh, like financial markets uh, story. It's possible that we, we can go towards compensation story as well. And uh, uh, let's say currently we we just got these findings, you know, like uh, let's say few few weeks ago. And as far as I understand, this kind of center for multimodal <laughs> communication, and immediately I didn't want to present any published work, but only okay. like that. Uh, the but, question uh, is open. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, 
before you move on, because this cumulative result actually also to looking at the same CEO over time, also looking at between different earning calls, uh, whether you know, analysts learn from the way and, and you know, getting back to the mean of the zone also, and is there like all the dynamic interactions from, from one call to the other? That's, that's, that's uh, exactly what we also thought uh, whether some question of analysts can be predictable. And that you can infer from other things. And, and uh, let's say kind, kind of reaction game is like, uh, instead of within group, this kind of conference call, it can be extrapolated to, uh, let's say, other groups. So that's absolutely positive, possible. Another thing, I mean, this is fascinating stuff, but I don't know if, if the data is long enough in terms of the sample. But imagine if you could do these rolling regressions and to see whether the negativity has increased or correlates with some systemic events or some social events. Of uh, currently, we are let's say, playing with degree of persistency in emotions. If uh, directors have, for instance, uh, kind of always po po positive emotions and ma manages to absorb negativity, whether this is priced by market. Right, uh, like something, whether it's high, it has higher salary, just, uh, you know, because uh, that's the fact also related to communication style, soft, uh, uh, kind of, uh, in, in kind of soft skills, something that uh, directors can do, and it, we can go through that route as well. Yeah, well, taking history and incorporating history to check, you know, what's happening in this communication skill within career development, because we've got data um, uh let's say I, I i don't remember um like from 15 to 20 definitely like five years you know? okay okay uh so we've got emotions we can see that there is communication you know like differences within group but one of step, uh, one of uh, kind of ways of thinking, you know, how does market react to kind of negativity, positivity of directors? And uh, here we didn't invent anything new, and it, it just we took some, some measures of cumulative of normal returns during earnings calls uh, and link it with uh, uh, negativity. That's aggregated measure of negativity. So all, uh, let's say, answers were collapsed into measure of negativity. And uh, uh, let's say, we also aggregated negative text, uh, whether it's kind of a CO, a CFO, and uh, let's say kind of our, our, our results. Uh, um, yes, uh, we have car kind of shorter over two days and from two to 60 days separately. And uh, uh, my main result here, Yes, uh, uh, it seems like voice uh, uh, matters, but uh, uh, kind of it's significant. It has, uh, let's say, uh, kind of corresponds to 9.6 lower stock return relative to subdomain. It's quite meaningful, uh, but it disappears in kind of longer term. So uh, yes, uh, uh, like in, sh in short term emotions, uh, like matter for investors. And the same whether it's like all team or whether it's CO or CFO. I held back on saying this before, and this is coming to the earlier regression as well. I think what would be nice is to inter interact the voice and the text. The really interesting thing would be, you know, the occasion where I send a positive neg a positive message with a negative voice. Like I'm trying to tell you everything's okay, but you can tell from my you know, whimpering in my voice that I'm actually about to break down, that you think he's not okay. Anyway, you can't magically do it, but that, that, mm -hmm. I think that's the question that I think first order you want to answer. Is this bringing something really different? Like, so, so, so the other test, which is an unfair test for you, but you know, mm -hmm. you kind of have to do it often, is if you removed negativity of voice management, mm -hmm. would you just get the negative text management coefficient going up? To compensate for it, such as the addition of it, mm -hmm. you know, we're just splitting two correlated things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, the statistics are putting them maybe a little in one and a little in the other, or a lot in one, a lot in the other. 
I'm not sure OLS is the best world for saying that's telling us which is most important. Well, anyway, <laughs> just you've got about five minutes left, so I don't want to. Let, let me also add on this that I think the foremost importance is to show that having voice generates non redundant information from text. And, and I think if you show that earlier on, you really build trust in, in all this and you can then develop it. But, you know, uh, I think that is the foremost important things that I would like to see in this paper. That right now I, I I, I sort of saw it through the regressions, the flipping side and stuff, but it's not it's not tested, which is I think squares with what Michael was saying probably if I understood. Okay, uh, uh, yes, you know, like uh, we always try to think whether voice and text complementary, you know, like or, or, or not, you know, whether one enhances effect of another one. And we experimented a little bit with, with this, but uh, I, I guess the main reason why I don't show explicitly, uh, it was kind of no, no, no significance. And uh, uh, we, we couldn't get a, anything kind of that we could, uh, let's say, we could proudly uh, let's say, show to public. I think that, that was, but experimenting with kind of dropping one and what is going to be this coefficient of another, that's the point well taken, definitely something to take a look. Uh, okay, uh, so from finance side, uh, we, we play, uh, let's say, with cars uh, so far, we can play with, uh, um, let's say, uh, uh, analyst kind of uh, one quarter ahead, let's say, forecast. So, like, whether we have measure of forecast error, you know, like high, high value, more pessimistic, let's say, for forecast. So, different between actual and consensus median forecast. So, high, high value. And another is forecast errors, you know, like absolute measures, how, how much you, you make, uh, well, analysts make mistakes. And uh, uh, let's say here, more negative voice is likely to have a kind of more pessimistic forecast, and uh, but it doesn't matter for size of this error. So, so there is a kind of some effect, uh, but for direction, but not for the size. Okay, so sixteen fifty nine. Conclusions and uh, uh, let's say, what is this paper about? What did we do? Uh, we collected a lot of data and tried to make some sense out of it. From audio files, we generated emotions. And uh, so far, so far, in this exercise that I talked about today, all we did, my uh, our main focus is on interactions within boardroom between kind of analysts and managers. Uh, and how different groups, uh, uh, let's say, of people respond to negativity for, for positive. Okay, uh, uh, let's say, so general, generally it happens that uh, uh, emotions of person who answers depend on emotions of uh, person who asks. Uh, so a certain degree of reciprocity. There are some differences across uh, kind of type of, let's say, analyst, uh, uh, let's say, kind of director. And it looks like very preliminary. I, I, I know that uh, Francesca is gonna criticize me, but it looks like that there is some additional information based on emotions uh, that could be incorporated by investors and Okay, you know, that's all for now.